to another video. This video is going to be a full tour of my frog room. I thought this video was well overdue since last time I did this I had 4 poison dart frogs. Now I have 57, so that went well. Anyways, uh, before we get into it I have a few updates that I would like to make. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. This is my face. I usually don't do face cam and I won't do it in the future that much, but I thought it would be fun to do it for this intro. Second of all, I'm actually going to rename this channel in the near future, probably to Emmanuel Carl, since that's my nickname in some other places. Uh, simply because, well, the name Tarantula Nest is very outdated. I have only one tarantula left that you're going to see soon. I used to keep primarily tarantulas instead of dart frogs, so I can't really use that name anymore. I'm also going to make some of my old videos unlisted. It's not because I want to remove them from the internet, but I don't really want some of my older and very low quality videos to be the first thing you see when you click on my channel and see what I have. They're still gonna be in a playlist of unlisted videos and I'm going to link it in the description. And I'm still going to keep some of the videos from the Tarantula Nest days. Well, let's just enjoy this frog room tour. I thought it would be best to start with this row. These are definitely my best looking enclosures and the one I put most effort into. Especially the one in the middle. I'm going to show you all the dart frogs I have and also mention some of the plants in each enclosure, but not all of the plants because that would take ages. I actually planted this vivarium here on the channel two years ago, but I ended up redoing it because a lot of plants weren't thriving and I wasn't quite happy with the substrate. It used to house my Dendrobates Tinctorius Assyrius pair, but I actually moved them to another enclosure which you'll see later. Right now it houses my Epipidobates Anthonia Riodaul. I don't know how Riodaul is supposed to be pronounced, but I'll put all the names on screen here for you. I currently keep four of them in here, and there are at least two males that sometimes call very loud. As far as the plants go, I have a lot of different ones in here. M many of them are anthuriums, since I started collecting anthuriums um, pretty much at the same time as I built this. Here I have an anthurium vichii, one of my favorites in the collection. Here's an anthurium waraquinum, or waraquinum, also known as the queen anthurium. This one is the king anthurium. I also have this hybrid between Anthurium radicans and Anthurium luxurians. In the middle here is a Monstera Oblica Amazonas. It doesn't have the classic fenestrations that the Peruvian form has, but it still looks very cool. I also have a lot of orchids. I have a Lepentes uh, Inca, Plerothalis alenii, uh, Plerothalis costaricensis, and Dracula Lotax, one of the monkey face orchids. I also have two types of Microgrammas in here. Microgramma nitida and an unknown species. Some Salaginella unicata. Back there I have a climb climbing plant that I don't actually remember the name of, but I'll put it here on screen. And here's some Ficus punctata. And here I have two different types of Nerogilias. I think that's actually it for the plants in here. Yeah, I have a Raphidophora Hei here as well. There's one of the frogs jumping around. Here's my biggest vivarium. This is a 36 by 18 by 36 inches Exoterra or 90 by 45 by 90 centimeters. In here I actually keep two different art frog species. I'm not recommending mixing species unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about that in this video, however I might mention it in the next one. Anyways, in here I keep Ranitomea Amazonica French Guiana Yellow and Salubedis Vitatus. This works quite well because the Ranitomeas are arboreal and the Phyllobates are terrestrial, so they don't really meet and interact that often, and these two species can't hybridize because they're not closely related. 
My last video was actually all about Philobetus Vitalis, since it's one of my favorite dart frogs out there. So if you want to know more about them specifically, you can check that out. Here is one of the Renetmea Amazonicas. I keep five Philobetus Vitalis in here. I believe it's two males and three females. It might be three males. Um, and I have four Ranitmea Amazonicas in here. I have a lot of plants in here and it would take a long time to mention them all so I'm not gonna do that. However, I am going to show you some of the most notable ones. Uh, first of all, I have this very big um, Philodendron Mame Green form. This is one of my favorite plants in the collection but it's really huge and maybe that's not ideal for all vivariums. I have recently trimmed it down and I am probably going to have to take it out at some point. I also have some Philodendron Elishoko Red here on the right side. I also have this um, Philodendron Splendid. This is a hybrid between Philodendron Vericosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. There's also this giant fern in the middle. It's a Didymoclina truncatula. Very nice looking fern, not one that you see very often, but if you do find it and have a big enclosure, get it because it's really beautiful. I also have some of the normal Philodendron Vericoso. You can't see that much of it, but here's a nice leaf at least. This is a Philodendron Billetier crossed with Philodendron Atapapuense. A big climbing plant on the wall here is Ficus Sagittara. It grows really quickly, so I don't recommend it. Um, but I don't have the heart to tear it out because it looks so pretty. But I have to trim it very often. There's also some Begonia Chelsea. And a bunch of different bromeliads. I have a lot more plant plants that I could mention. And I have a video right here about plants for dart frog vivariums where I actually mention most of the ones I have in here. So feel free to check that out if you're curious. This house is my pair of banded Dendrobates leucomelas or Dendrobates leucomelas guiana banded. And I also have a third frog in here which is one of their froglets. This isn't the best looking enclosure I have at the moment. The light I have on here is actually way too bright for the philodendrons. They don't really like standing in way too bright light and they get paler leaves and stuff. Some of the plants in here include Philodendron melanochrysum, Philodendron atapapoense, Rhesia hybrid fire, Rhesia fosteriana and some Nirgilia ampelasia green. There's also a really big Philodendron mandionum in here which I have since this was recorded, uh, trimmed down. I'm also really happy with the moss and the Marcaravia growing in this big root piece. Not my best looking enclosure right now. It could use some work, but we'll see what it holds for us in the future. On the bottom shelf, below these plastic bins, I have mostly just tadpoles and some dubia roaches that I raise as feeder insects. Here are my two propagation bins. I actually thought I would try to do a two-in-one setup for both plant propagations with a bunch of small pots and for dart frog froglets that I'm raising myself. I haven't put any froglets in because I'm not done taking cuttings for now so I will change it around a bit in here for the next few weeks but after that I might try and put some froglets in here as well. And here at the top are my fruit fly cultures. I currently only culture Drosophila melanogaster, which is the smaller variant. Move, moving on to this rack, here's my chair where I sit and uh, watch my animals for most of the day. It's really a really nice place to sit by your computer since you have quite a nice view to look at. I really don't understand people who have their desks up against the wall so they just sit facing the wall. This is a lot better since I get to watch my animals all the time. Behind my chair I have three enclosures. 
This enclosure is currently empty. I will however keep some froglets in here soon because I have a lot of them that are about to leave the water. In here I keep a bunch of Renitumea Amazonica froglets. I have one here that's just about to come out of the water. Here is a little guy as well that you can see. Here is the one tarantula that I still have in my collection. Believe it or not, the lock is not for some young, younger children in the house or something. It's actually for the spider itself, because these spiders can apparently open sliding glass doors. It's not very common, but better safe than sorry. Anyways, this is an Acanthoscuria geniculata, or the Brazilian white knee tarantula. There's a reason why this is the species that I still have when I sold almost all, all of my others. It's a very ferocious eater and it's always outside, never in, in its burrow. So you get, you get to see it a lot. This is also the nicest tarantula enclosure I've ever had. It ha this was actually an old dart frog enclosure which I just replaced some of the substrate in to something more diggable. Now we do a 180 degree turn to check out this vivarium. In here I keep five Ranitmea reticulatas. This is probably the prettiest frog in my collection, but at the moment they're quite shy for me. I think this might change with age or when they start breeding or just in general get used to me. I'm also considering Maybe splitting them up in case they don't really like being in a group. Maybe they would do better if I just keep them in a pair. I'm not entirely sure, but if you do have an experience of Renetmea reticulatus, feel free to write in the comments. Anyways, in here I have some really nice plants. Here's a Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. Here is a Philodendron Glorious, which is a hybrid between Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. Here's a Raphidophora Crotalsi. There's a Big Vrisha Ospine, or however that's pronounced. There's also a bit of Marcravia in here, as well as some Macodes Petola. Here's a Begonia Coralina green form. Back here I actually have one of my favorite plant species, but not specimens, in the collection. This, these two very tiny leaves are actually a Monstera oblique Peruvian form. These do look amazing once they get a bit bigger and have some fenestrations. There's also some Philodendron Gygas in here, a bunch more Marcravias, big Philodendron Ornatum, which might have to be cut down soon, but not yet. I also have this Philodendron Camposportuanum, um, Philodendron Lupinum, and this unknown vine, which I have no idea what it is. Some Oakley Ficus, and a bit of... Begonia prismantocarpa in here as well. Here are my crested gecko enclosures. To the left is Franzelina, which aside from a cat was my first animal. I got her about seven years ago now. To the right is Frasebuse, who I got in 2019. I'm not the happiest with these enclosures. The left one looks pretty good, but the right one definitely has a lot of unused and wasted space. As you can see, there's very little things that the gecko can actually climb on in, on the, in the upper half. Uh, I used to have a very big philodendron in there, and it was very beautiful and took up a lot of space. And then the bottom just snapped, so the whole thing just fell off. Here are the last enclosures that I have to show you. This is an old rack with an aquarium on top and some Exoterra 12x12x12s on the bottom. These bottom enclosures definitely aren't big enough for any adult dart frogs, 
But I keep my froglets in here for the first few months before they're ready to be sold. At the top here, I have my pair of Dendrobates Tinctorius Assyrius. These are one of the all-time classic dart frogs, which are always out, always showing themselves, and they're really bold. They don't care about anything. If I wave my hand at them, they won't jump away. Um, this light actually isn't that good, so I will insert some old footage of them, where you can see their color a bit better. This is my row of froglet enclosures. And even though they're not very big and doesn't house as many plants as my big ones, I still really like them because there's always a lot of things going on in here with so many frogs in there. In here I have two Dendrobates Leucomelas Guiana Banded. I'm probably going to upgrade them quite soon. There's a lot of Monstera Silti Pecana in here. It's growing like crazy. Also some Syngonium Vendlandii Aurei. I don't know how to tell them apart, and I think I have both of them. And in the back here is a tiny Anthurium Magnificum hybrid. This one isn't that grown in yet, but hopefully it will be soon. In the middle here is a bunch of Phylobates vitalis froglets. Even though I only have three plants in here, yet I still think it looks pretty good. There's a lot of Episcia cupriata and some Cissus amazonica. Here's the last enclosure of this frog room tour. This is where I keep my juvenile Dendrobates tinctorius Assyrius, and I have quite a few of them in here. There's also a really big Philodendron gloriosum in here, some Cissus discolor, some Piper sylvaticum, um, Salaginella unicata, one of my favorite plants, I use it in many of my vivariums. And here's a tiny little Monstera adansoniae variegata. Here's also some Philodendron dark lord, I almost forgot to mention it. Before wrapping this video up, I just wanted to quickly mention that my next video is actually going to be an in-depth poison dart frog care sheet or most likely a series in maybe four or five parts. If you have any questions for that video, you can feel free to leave them in the comments and maybe I'll cover it. Also, until next time, feel free to like, share and subscribe for more. You can also follow me on my Instagram at gecko underscore geek 6 Until next time, bye.